May 20th 80 The Empire Strikes Back has been rightfully hailed as a most entertaining movie of all time continuing the story of our heroes from 77 as Star Wars, these days known better as A New Hope, but it somehow managed to up the ante, bringing a fresh look to the Star Wars galaxy, upping the drama, the action, the intrigue, everything. So, how can we claim that Empire is not only the greatest Star Wars but the greatest movie of all time over four decades later 44 years later in light the arguing, the sniping, the weak stuck inside the Falcon, inside a giant slug, inside a huge asteroid, the long slow melt towards I love you, I know Star Wars most enduring romance that showed Star Wars was growing up. With it warning the Battle of Hoth's ground assault begins as five huge Imperial walkers stomp through the snow to take the rebel base. Amazing special effects, thrilling music and heroic deaths. And what other major motion picture put its biggest action scene in the first act of the movie? It would have been so easy for Yoda to be a very impressive but unconvincing mutt but, but the mastery of Frank Oz and his team, of which there were more than people realize, along with the inspired design of the late, great Stuart Friedburn made the Jedi Master a living, breathing character. The film hinged on its believability, and they pulled it off magnificently. We'd seen the Imperial Star Destroyer in A New Hope, chasing down Princess Leia in her blockade runner in the opening scene of the movie, but Empire introduced Lord Vader's flagship The Executor, a ten-mile-long behemoth that dwarfed almost everything else in space. A design classic, it took people's breath away. Without doubt the breakaway villain of the film was Boba Fett, the masked Mandalorian who tracked the Millennium Falcon all the way to Cloud City. But he wasn't alone. Denger, Bosk, Zuckus, 4, Lemon IG, minus 88 were all hired in the search for Skywalker's friends, and all became staples of future books and comics. Denger even turned up in the Clone Wars TV series, played by original trilogy fan Simon Pegg. We'd seen Lord Vader throttle poor Admiral Mehdi with a force in Star Wars, witnessed Ben's skills as he evaded stormtroopers, and watched as Luke turned off his targeting computer to destroy the Death Star. But none of it was half as magical as hearing Yoda explain what the Force was, and how its energy surrounds us and binds us and watching as Yoda lifts the X-Wing out of the swamp, pure movie magic. In 77 John Williams won the Academy Award for Star Wars, beating out his own score for close encounters of the third kind in the process. And while he didn't win a little gold man at the 1981 Oscars, that award would go to Michael Gore for his score to Alan Price's fame, it's easily arguable that the score for Empire was an even more impressive accomplishment. The grand pianos of the Battle of Hoth, the sweeping beauty of City in the Clouds and the action-packed bombast of the asteroid field. All classic tracks, and don't forget the mystery of Yoda and the Force. The man tasked with taking the director's chair and making the movie his own. After Lucas opted never to direct, again, which officially he wouldn't until 1999 as The Phantom Menace, though he did direct scenes in the Watt TV movie Caravan of Courage and a number of inter-scenes in 1997 as Star Wars Trilogy Special Edition, Kirshner put three years of his life into Empire, making astute observations about the truth of the characters and the situations and bringing a more mature edge to the Star Wars saga. He's a card player, gambler, scoundrel. You'd like him we all liked him, even when he was boxed in by Vader and fed on Bisbon and forced to sell out his friends to protect Cloud City, of which he was their Baron Administrator. It didn't take long for Lando to prove his true allegiance, helping Leia, Chewie and the two droids attempt to save Han and then escape Bisbon and return to the Rebel fleet. Heck, by the end of the film, he's even wearing Han's shirt and jacket. Not only was it beautifully shot and structured, but this beautifully lit set was the scene for some of the most iconic images in the saga. Eight are waiting patiently for young Luke to approach him on the platform, Han Solo turned into a coffee table, Chew H plaintive wail in the aforementioned I love you, I know, exchange. Not many movie locations are as menacing or alluring as this. We saw her fly in Star Wars, and already she was the coolest ship in the galaxy, but it was Empire where she showed just why Han and Chew put so much stock in her. She may have looked like a piece of junk but what other ship could turn three Star Destroyers inside out while being chased by a handful of TIE fighters and then lose them in an asteroid field. Other films have spent the last 44 years playing catch up with these scenes. Certainly the most famous scene from a Star Wars film so far, and arguably from any movie ever made. In 80, when the internet was but a twinkle in Serpent Khan's eyes, such shocking revelations took far longer to surface and the whole world would hold its breath, certain that Vader was lying until 83.